Okay, so um, yeah, we're going to be um, taking a look at some camera tracking. Uh, this is going to be a slightly more advanced um, camera tracking exercise than um, we've done previously on webinars, uh, looking at object tracking and also using reference images and um, survey data to line up a uh, camera. So um, without further ado, uh, dive into our um, 3D equalizer. We're going to be starting this with a uh, currently already tracked scene, um, but just camera tracked. Um, we are going to be going over the object tracking part of this as well. So just to show you what we've actually started with, um, this is a piece of footage that was shot on a Blackmagic camera. Um, if we jump into 3D orientation, you can see we've got a pretty decent little point cloud here. Um, we've got points outside of the window. We have a very visible back wall. We also have points along the front of the, uh, the table that's in the foreground. So this is already tracked. Um, you can see that we have the camera currently also moving. This was actually shot on a dolly. You can see it's a very linear um, track itself. Um, okay, so we're actually not really going to be doing much else with the camera track itself. Um, the rest of this is going to be an object track of the mask that you'll see our actor wearing. So if we just jump in here, um, I'm just going to play this through. This is our shot. Um, and as I said, we already have our camera tracked. So we have, if I turn on 3D distortion, you'll see that we have 3D points already on the background there. So we're now going to start adding points for our um, for our camera, uh, sorry, for our uh, object, uh, for the mask. Um, before we get going, the first thing we need to do is make a brand new point group for this object. So I'm just going to stop that. I'm going to go into my point groups. I'm going to add a new point group. And this point group you'll see is already set as an object point group. I'm going to rename this. I'm just going to very quickly up here. Just going to call this mask. One just need one thing. That's better. Mask. That's better. Cool. Okay. So um, now we have our point group. Um, I can start to go in and start to add points into this. Um, so I am going to run through some tracking of these points. Um, I don't know how far I'll get in. Um, I do also have uh, another version where all these points have been tracked, but I'd like to jump in and maybe track a few of these points at least, just to look at some of the issues that we may um, come across. So I'm going to start adding down points, um, just holding control. Uh, you'll see that I am currently selected on the mass point group. Remember, we can jump in and out of the different point groups by double clicking. Um, but I'm currently in the mask object point group, and I'm now just going to hold down control, drag over, and place a marker. Now, I'm going to be doing, obviously, um, looking at what we've got here, it's probably a pretty good bet that we can do marker tracks for this. Um, one of the issues that we may very well get is that we may find that these markers will jump from marker to marker. I'm going to test that. So I'm just going to change this to a marker and I'm going to gauge it. And I can already see it's it's kind of kind of centered, but I'm going to uh, just make sure send 2D is on. I'm going to apply a track straight away jumps. It's jumping off quite significantly. Now that's I think partly because there's a lot of movement and it's kind of jumped out of its box. So I'm going to make the outer search region a little bit bigger. Okay, try and track that. Now this, because this is doing something I, I didn't really want to do, which is obviously extending the size of the search region itself. 
Um, because it's now looking further out, there's a good chance that it's going to lock on to one of the other markers. So let's try this. Uh, not bad, actually. It's done a pretty good job all the way through that. Um, so yes, in this case, it's been a success and actually worked pretty well. Um, I'm going to run this up to the point where it becomes unusable. Now, actually, another thing that uh, I could do, you can see at this point, at frame uh, 110, it drops off. You can see it kind of gives up the ghost and starts to wander off. Now, that's because, obviously, if you look at that point, it's not a particularly defined point anymore, and it's going to be very hard to find the center point. However, actually, um, using some of our color correction controls, and more importantly, using the chroma key, um, actually, we could probably tease a few extra frames from this. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go in and pull up my image controls. And I'm going to turn on my chroma key and pick, and actually I'll pick from the red, from the orange up here. Grab a color here, and I'm then going to, let's just bring up those chroma key controls again. And I'm going to just push up the range a little bit so I can see a bit more of those those orange points. Now you can already see that this is starting to look a lot more visible, but what I want to do is just begin adding colors into this. And as I add these colors, whoops, let me just bring up my control again. I should be able to like start to dial this down. I'm adding the colors, but you can see look this is this is actually really quite visible now. Um, so I'm going to try and bring that down about 0.3-ish, somewhere about there, um, and I'll just add some more variations of that same orange color in. Now, oops, there we go. Uh, let's pick this, and I'm I'm adding to the color that it's that it's picking at the moment. If I need to, I can minus away to remove certain colors. So if there are certain colors that are popping up, I can do that. So I'm just going to go in and add a few of these colors just to improve the solve a little. Let's just remove these ones. That's pretty good. OK, that should be enough. Now, another thing that I will normally do if I am doing this kind of chroma key, um, this can tend to create a very kind of buzzy image that it's, calc uh, that, it's, that it's tracking against. So what I'll tend to also do is in my image controls, I'll normally apply a little bit of blurring as well, actually quite a lot. So you can see that now is looking like a much more stable point that we can track off of. So if I now come up a little bit more. So again, look, it's starting to fade off. But again, as long as I've got something there, I can add to the selection. And there you go. Add into it. I've now isolated that piece out. So I'm just going to continue from about there. I'm going to gauge markup, make sure it's on there, maybe just pick a little bit more, just make sure that I have got as much of that marker picked as possible, 